space. The final frontier. These are the voyages of Whiplash and his little Aurora. His continuing mission to explore all the moons of the Stanton system. To seek out new friends and spam them with YouTube videos. To boldly go where no one has gone before. Except for those that already have. Alright, welcome to another Star Citizen video. Um, thanks to my overly dramatic introduction, you may have guessed that our theme for tonight is centered around exploration a little bit. So, reason being I want to show you a little corner of the Stanton system we've not visited before, which is the moon of Selen, all the way down here. Now you'll notice when I try and select it as a quantum destination, I get this nasty red line because Planet Crusader is in the way. I can't fly there directly, but what I can do, however, is set myself an intermediate destination. So in this case, we're going to quickly go to the Cry Astro Service Station, which is within reach, and then we'll quantum there and uh, find our way around this big ball of gas that's obstructing the view so that we can get to Selen. Quantum drive is now on. Boom, baby. Astro service station. So this is our uh, repair, refuel, and rearm facility, which I don't think I've used recently. But um, at some point, I'll probably demonstrate what that uh, works like. It's fairly straightforward. You land, they fix you up, they refuel you, and, and that's that. So there is where we're going. That bright little dot right in the center is Crusader's third moon, the moon of Selen which we've not yet visited, so you'll see now that I've flown all the way out there to Cryastro. Um, Crusader is no longer obstructing my path, so it should be fairly straightforward. Just set Salen as a destination, and there we go. Get a bit of a different perspective on things. So it's drive is now instead of doing the cockpit view. And here we are. So Crusader's third moon. There's Crusader in the background. And here we are. So Selen, um, to give you maybe a bit of a quick overview of uh, the design brief for this moon, it is volcanic. Uh, Daimar, as you'll remember, is uh, rocky and deserty. Yala is icy with those pretty rings around it. This one is... Um, well, grey comes to mind. <laughs> um, let's maybe get in a little bit closer so we can take a look at the terrain and features from up close. Quantum drive is now off. There we are. Let's uh, pick up a spot of interest on the surface we can fly to. I think, uh, yeah, Terra Mills will do nicely, so accelerate down quickly. Oh, 
Okay, cool. Now that we're up to speed, I can tell you a bit about Selen. So, as I mentioned, um, volcanic moon. It has a number of dormant volcanoes. So, it's not um, volcanically active at the moment, but you do have lots of uh, geysers dotting the surface, apparently. Which I'd like to go and take a look at up close. I've not had the opportunity to do that. And uh, all of those what look like pointy bits um, scattered around the surface um, if you inspect them up closer they will probably turn out to be mountains but uh, we'll go and have a look for ourselves there's also these interesting lines on the surface I'm not entirely sure what those are but um, yeah, overall, for me personally, it, it almost feels like this one could do with a little bit more variation in terms of terrain. Um, it looks very uniform at the moment, almost samey. But uh, with the improvements to Planet Tech that are coming in the future, um, I'm sure they'll sort that one out. So, while we're going down to the surface, let's quickly fill with the weapon settings a little. You'll notice now that only my two primary guns are firing, so let's quickly switch around the weapon groups just to kill some time. Otherwise you have to listen to me brabbling on the whole time. I'll select guns, take my two M3As into group 1 as well, and now when I fire, you'll notice they all fire at the same time. So that's cool. Accelerate back to a reasonable speed again. But in any case, um, yeah, it's 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 quite bleak and uh, apparently devoid of really interesting features. Um, so for me, to be honest, Selen has never been my favourite of the three. Um, so normally, when I'm playing, I don't tend to spend a lot of time exploring it, and which is one of the reasons why I wanted to make this video is to shall we say give this moon a fair shot and um, see if there's anything interesting that uh, I may have overlooked on some of my previous visits but then again that's that space um, there are definitely um, planetary bodies out there that are bleaker and less interesting than others so I suppose in some sense um, Salen is, is similar to our own moon which looks very stark and um, grey and flat and almost uninteresting to an extent but uh, it, it has a, a unique charm and a beauty all its own so let's see what we can find you can immediately see as you get close to the surface that there is actually a little bit of colour and terrain variation although um, yeah, you know, I think the place could do with someone taking out the coloring pencils and maybe adding a dash of variation here and there. Um, we'll see. And let's fly by one of these. Uh, they did turn out to be mountains after all. So here's a fairly sizable peak. What can we say about it? is indeed a mountain and that's all I have to say about that so moving on Terra Mills is over that way the terrain seems to be reasonably flat um, clearly very rocky huge boulders scattered over the surface. Ah, there we go. So there you can see some of the geysers I was talking about earlier. Jetting some gaseous substance of one kind or another into the atmosphere. So we'll take a look at those up close a little bit later. Oop, hang on a second. What? Ah, Crusader looming over the horizon. Crusader is very good at looming. 
it looms large no matter which of the main of the moons that you you land on it's always there all right this is the Terramals outpost um, it's fairly similar to some of the other spots I've landed at before um, Terramals if I remember correctly uh, is a hydroponics facility so these guys these guys are growing food believe it or not in a landscape such as this take off complete landing complete obviously that's all being done by our um, hydroponics I'm not sure that they can actually grow anything in the soil of this place itself but um, well who knows it's supposed to be the 30th century so I would assume uh, agricultural technology is advanced a bit compared to where we are today. Nice landing. Chip is nice and steady. Uh, yeah, Terra Mulls. But, um,. I'm not really all that interested in the inside of the outpost right now. What I'm going to do is run off to this uh, little building on the side here. Lens flare, lens flare. building which is labeled landing services for a very specific reason which I will show to you shortly right and here we are inside the platinum bay with the coffee machine that still doesn't work great chips begin and end with platinum bay yeah well that's debatable they won't even let you use the couches anywho ooh, nice view this is a ship retrieval console, and um, while I can't actually summon any ships here, there are a couple of things here that I can retrieve. So let's head outside and see what it is that I've called to the landing pad. She is the RSI Ursha Rover. Now if you've watched my um, Star Citizen Shorts playlist on uh, my channel, you'll see that I've uh, made one short video about driving the, the rover on the surface of Yala at night time. But uh, I thought it would be worthwhile doing a slightly longer video with commentary let's open the locker to see what's inside absolutely nothing so we'll close that again um, for some reason this rover doesn't appear to be very steady on its wheels trying to make me seasick but that's alright explorers will not be deterred by such trivialities as uh, madly shaking rover vehicles. Now, that's us, or me rather, sitting inside the very comfortable driver's seat. So let's figure out how you switch this thing on. It's always the story with a new car, where did they put the indicators and the key and all of that nonsense. Space industries. Enjoy the ride. System check. Okay, that seems to have done the trick. Yeah. Oh, it comes with shields.
right. Oh, no, I need to align my view with where I'm going, otherwise I am going to crash into something. Whoa! This thing likes getting air. I suspect it might be because of the lower gravity, um, this being a moon obviously, so like I said, um, I wanted to take a quick look at one of these geezers up close, geezers, geysers, I don't know, call them whatever you like. And let's head out the back. see what's what. Now this looks like, um, I don't know, possibly volcanic rock of some kind. Like it might have been a lava flow at some stage. I'm not a geologist, but um, I don't know, if they were going for volcanic rock, I'm convinced. I'm willing to believe it. Right, what are we here? Um, hmm. I have absolutely no idea. But it looks amazing. Clearly my character is absolutely enthralled. I don't know whether this is steam or some other form of gas. Uh, vapor, whatever, but uh, well, the vapor effects are quite nice. So, yes, um, with typical scientific precision. I think this is about as much as we can learn about these geysers right now. Is it geyser or geyser? That's okay, you can debate that for amongst yourselves. Cool door animation. Right, on to our next objective, which is what exactly? What shall we explore now? We've got a six-wheeled vehicle at our disposal and kilometers and kilometers of open terrain that we can go and explore. get a slightly better driving perspective. Look it's me! Oh, I can't drive like this. Suspension seems to be working well. All six wheels are independent of each other so I would imagine this thing can handle some pretty rough terrain it certainly loves getting airborne I'm floating almost more than I'm driving but yes so the idea behind the Earth obviously would be to uh, allow you to explore over longer distances than you would typically be able to do on foot. I mean, I can't walk for kilometers on end, not just because of the time it's going to take, but uh, you've got limited oxygen supply and your character has stamina and all of that sort of thing. So well, that was a nice jump. And with the Ursa, you can drive um, much longer distances and go and explore some interesting Geographical features, all in the name of science. Uh, uh, rock, rock, uh, uh. Stops on a dime, this thing. I almost did a power slide there.
Alright, so I think what we'll do is we'll head for this mountain over here. And then... Uh, rock! Rock! Oh! Drat, I think I might have scratched the paint. How bad is it? Oh, surprisingly enough, everything is still where it's supposed to be. Thought for a second that I might have torn a wheel off or something. Hmm. RSI builds them tough, I'm impressed. And by the way, if you're wondering about that um, funny, uh, almost, I think, a hexagonal shaped outline around uh, the rover, that's just a shadow glitch. So, one of the little things that need to get fixed, but. Um, doesn't stop me from driving around, so shadow or no shadow, here we go. Oh, the rain's getting a bit hillier and rougher. But uh, when the terrain gets rough, my rover gets rougher. Alright, this looks like a good spot. Safely parked. Remember to put the handbrake on. Heck, I don't even know this thing has a handbrake. We'll just switch off the power. That'll probably stop it from going anywhere. Alright, let's go outside. Hmm. Seems I was inclined to park things at a bit of an angle. Rover, stay! Can't have you roving away while I'm out exploring. That would be very uncomfortable. I'd have to walk all the way back to my ship. Alright, now let's do a bit of mountaineering, shall we? See if we can climb all the way to the top of that peak. Not that there's any real point in doing so, but um oof. Yeah, that definitely looks like some volcanic rock. See I'm becoming more of a geologist by the minute. This exploration thing is cool. But yeah, um like I said, I don't think there's any particular point in wanting to climb all the way to the top. I just want to see if I can. That's the beauty of having an entire moon to explore. You can go wherever you want. There's no wall stopping you. There's nothing that gets in your way. If you see something, you can go have a look at it. I see the shadowy circle has uh, transferred from my rover to my character. Onwards and upwards, spaceman. Onwards and upwards. Breathing and heart rate still appear to be okay. I think my spaceman is a lot fitter than I am at this point. He's starting to struggle a little bit. Ooh, take a jump. further. The slope has become a bit too steep. My character is now sliding backwards. But okay, the view from here is quite decent. Look, there's another mountain off in the distance. And if we look over to the left, how far have we traveled? Oh, it's difficult to make out. I think Terra Mills's, um point of interest mark is right on top of my ships, but it looks like around 3,700, 3,800 meters. So, in these couple of minutes since I left the base, we've gone the better part of four kilometers. That's quite impressive. It's 
just a fraction of the available space of course so anywho that's about it folks I hope you enjoyed this quick look at Selen I've left my footprints on this moon now and of course they fade but I'll be back to make some more in the future I'm sure no don't dare me yee <laughs> I wanted to say something a bit more dramatic that uh, befits the great explorer but we was the only thing that came to mind so let's do that again low gravity jump and here we go Whee!